Man, it's crazy. I am turning 30 this week. Such a weird thing to me. And I was really toying with different ideas of things I could uh, shoot for a video about that. And I came up with this idea of talking about what's been in my bag after three decades. Ever since I was born, I have used a camera. I was born camera in hand. Now nah, I'm just kidding, but all jokes aside, I have used quite a wide variety of gear since I started creating. And rather than just jumping into what I use now, let's backtrack a little bit and talk a bit about my creative journey and the different cameras I used along the way. So for me, the first camera I got to use that was a more professional camera it was a Nikon D7100. I, it was a really great birthday present right around when I started university. It was really the first semi-professional camera body I'd ever used. And I mean, you know, using it early on, taking photos of friends, shooting little car reviews for another YouTube channel. It was quite light, but it was really a great all around camera that got me into photography. And ultimately it was actually the camera that I took with me when I first traveled overseas. So when I graduated university, as you might've seen some of my other videos about why I went to Korea, there wasn't a lot of jobs. Long story short, I ended up actually in Vietnam. And while I was there, I was just like, man, I really want to show my family what I'm seeing, everything that's going on around me. I've got my D7100, let's use that. So due to my limited knowledge of how video worked, rather than just shooting handheld like a normal person, I went out and bought a Zion Crane, which for those of you who don't know, is a type of gimbal, quite a heavy duty one at that. And it's actually still the gimbal I have to date. But I thought, man, like if I'm gonna shoot video, I need stabilization. I can't just shoot freehand. So I took that thing with my D7100 mounted on it all around the neighborhood to show general views and then ultimately I started riding scooter taxis backwards while holding this thing and shooting downtown Hanoi. Probably wasn't the safest in hindsight. Ultimately after my time in Vietnam I actually ended up going back to Seoul, South Korea where I got an opportunity to work in marketing. I was mostly in front of the camera at this point, hosting my boss's YouTube channel. And at this stage, I kind of looked at my 7100 and I said, man, I want a mirrorless camera. So I actually ended up selling my D7100 to get my first mirrorless camera. Actually scratch that, I did have a Nikon J2 at one point, we're not gonna count that, to get my first serious mirrorless interchangeable lens camera. So after going to a bunch of different used markets, I ended up picking up the Fuji X-T20 with zero lenses because I used my full budget just to get the camera body. If you'd like to see a full review of that camera, check about my left hand here. But like I said, all my budget went into getting the body. So I actually couldn't get a lens right off the bat that was designed for the Fuji, which ended up being actually the best thing that could have happened. So because of that, I actually ended up getting a whole bunch of vintage lenses that I could then mount on my Fuji X-T20 with quite a wide variety of adapters. This actually ended up being the best thing at this stage of my photography career. I had no idea what aperture versus shutter speed was and having a Fuji that is very dexterous in all the dials and buttons and an old school manual film lens that you could control, physically control the aperture on meant that I knew exactly what I was doing for every photo I took. A lot of my photos were of course quite blurry and it was definitely trial by fire but this was honestly some of the best learning I got to do and really opened the floodgates for my passion for photography and videography as well. But fast forwarding a little bit I ended up coming back to Canada and I decided to sell my Fuji X-T20 not because it wasn't a great camera but because I wanted to get a full frame camera. Everything I'd had up until that point had been crop sensor even my DSLR. So I did and I ended up going on to eBay and I got myself a used Nikon Z6 and this was a great camera that I ultimately ended up using for the better part of three years and I'm buying a whole bunch of f-mount glass that I then adapted onto it which is great for the budget in fact if you'd like to see my full playlist on this Nikon Z6 on my Nikon content check by my left hand here but I was able to build this channel through my journey learning how to use my camera Going into my 30s, there's a lot of changes, both in terms of my gear, my life, and my headspace. I mean, from a life perspective, I'm getting married this summer. I have a job that I'm super passionate about, and I'm building a career in the space I love. And to top all that off, in terms of the type of content I make for my channel, that's 
probably going to shift as well. So changing the direction of my channel and the type of content, let's expand on that a little bit. It's not so much a change as it is more so continuing what's already been happening. Ever since I sold my Nikon Z6, I've been kind of going away from the rumor news style videos and branching into some things I'm more passionate about. A great example of that would be the recent barbershop shoot I did on this channel. Check up my left hand here if you haven't caught that one yet. But videos like that don't necessarily get a ton of draw views or subscribers to actually build this channel. But I don't want that to dissuade me from shooting the type of content. I learn so much when I shoot like this. I get so much out of it and the creative output is just amazing and it keeps me excited to shoot every single week. Now, that being said, does that mean I'll do no more rumors or news-based videos? No, of course not. I'm still going to do that, but it's just not going to necessarily be the only or main thing on this channel moving forwards. All right, that's probably enough of me reminiscing my 20s. Let's talk about what's actually in my camera bay going into my 30s and in 2024. But one thing to keep in mind is I don't carry all this gear every single day. This is just the gear I find myself using the most frequently. Okay, so the actual bag, um, this is not necessarily the bag I use every single day. In fact, in my everyday setup, I use something much smaller than this. I use the Peak Design Everyday Sling. But for this one, it's just a general low pro backpack. I've had this for the better part of a decade. I don't even think they make this specific model anymore. But, you know, if I'm taking all my gear to a shoot, this is what I use. It's got a nice big open pocket in the top. It's got a laptop sleeve here outside. And then a main compartment where you keep your gear in the bottom. Not a very expensive bag compared to like the Peter McKinnon bags of the world, but still pretty good nonetheless. In terms of my backup camera, this camera, which is just the Sony ZV-1. Picked it up, up, used about six months ago to replace my Osmo Pocket 2. It was before the Pocket 3 came out, but this is generally what I use for vlogging as well as product shots when I'm, when I'm shooting with my main camera. Now, of course, many people have issues with that camera saying, oh, it's not wide enough for vlogging. Well, I have this giant selfie stick that extends about six feet by Ulanzi. This thing is great because, you know, obviously you could just mount the camera on the top, extend six feet, and the handle turns into a tripod bottom. So if you're wanting to stop and get some stationary shots, you can with just this. And I mean, yeah, it's not going to support a full frame camera, but for just shooting with the ZV-1, this is more than enough. Let's talk microphones. The first mic that I use a lot when I'm just running around is the Deity D3 Pro. This is a shotgun mic that is rechargeable with the USB-C port on the side. It works awesome and it's something that I like to use, especially when I'm vlogging. In terms of clip-on mics, I actually use the Ulanzi wireless mic system. This includes a wireless receiver and two mics that automatically pair to it when it's turned on. The sound quality is great, the price is awesome, and it's something that I take with me to most shoots, whether it's for clients or for myself. In terms of the camera itself, I use the Panasonic S5 II, and the lens that's on it right now is just my daily driver, which is the 20 to 60 kit lens. Yes, I know it's a variable aperture lens, but it's great for just general vlogging, photo, and video. And if you'd actually like to see a full review of this lens, check above my hand here. I've got a full review going into it. It's just great. And the S5 II has been an amazing camera to use. It's not super heavy. It's great for video, and the photos look amazing as well. In terms of my other two lenses, I have two primes. The first one being the 50mm 1.7, also by Panasonic. I use this mostly for portraiture, as well as talking head stuff on this channel when I have enough focus, dis when I've got enough distance from myself. I'll actually use this at the end of the video. And also a manual focus per gear L mount 14mm f2.8. I just wanted something that was a bit wider for shooting when I'm in my home studio. All right, now we are on the S5 II with the KNF Concept Glow filter on it as well. Check on my left hand here and the 50mm 1.7. So another thing that I like to do a lot on this channel and I use for a lot of my work is my drone. In this case, I've got the DJI Mini 3 Pro with the spare battery as well as the RC controller with the screen on it. Had this drone for the last year and a half and it's just something I love to take with me everywhere I go. It's super small, it's not too big and it just gets the job done. It looks super clean and there's just not really a lot of bad things I can say about it. I mean, yeah, obviously when you're shooting with a smaller drone, it's not gonna be great in low light, but the flexibility of being able to shoot in more places is definitely something that I love. And if you'd like to see more of my drone-based content, check up on my left hand here. Just in case you're wondering what camera was filming me while I was doing most of my talking, it 
It's actually the Panasonic GH6, which I had on loan at the time of creating this video. And also as well, I always like to try to showcase what the gear I'm talking about actually looks and sounds like. So right now you are hearing me through the D80 D3 Pro and you're seeing me through the Pergear 14mm f2.8 wide angle manual focus lens. But that's it guys, that's what's in my camera bag and that's kind of my midlife 30 year status update. <laughs> So guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you found it enjoyable. And I mean, I'd love to hear in the comments below what is in your daily carry? What are some pieces of kit that you've been using for a long period of time that you're not gonna change? I mean, I know that's really what this whole video was about was change and me not necessarily using the same gear all the time, but it's not me also saying that all that gear didn't get me to where I am now. I mean, every piece of kit I've used has been great for different purposes and I wouldn't change a thing. But let's wrap this one here. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and remember to take beautiful photos every single day. Don't do it for the views, do it for yourself. And I look forward to seeing you all in another video super duper soon.